come a long way. We, we have HD, we have uh, 4K, we have 3D uh, Blu-rays now. But what about like Technicolor? What about the, uh, you know, HDR? What about the silver screen age? What about the golden age of cinema? I'm talking about black and white films for today. How's it going, everyone? I'm your host, Chris here, Hurtastic Reviews. If you're new to this channel, this is the channel where we talk about movies. We talk about figures. That's why we talk about figuring out movies. Uh, we also, if you're returning back, thanks so much for the support. I really do appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe notification bell. See, people who are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. You're going to get an awesome greeting like that where I just really deeply appreciate it. If you're new, just start joining, you know, so you can keep up on all the, the figures that are coming out and all the movies um, and re film recommendations. Like I said earlier, I'm talking about black and white films. I'll talk about the silver screen. I'm talking about the golden age of cinema. Uh, you know, for some of the dorks out there who only watch, you know, Christopher Nolan's 4K only movies and the crappy whatever MCU movies that are being put out on streaming services. This is an educational video for you. This is a this is an episode where we're talking about the top five black and white films. Now, black and white films can be a little hard to get into, and I think for a lot of people, the only ex uh, exposure they've had in black and white films are with Chris Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer when it's part of the time in black and white. Bruh. So, today, I felt like I'd give a top five recommendation on black and white films to basically get into, right? So, uh, when we talk about black and white films, yeah, a lot of times they are older. Sometimes there's some contemporary new ones, like uh, Francis Ha that Noah Baumbach had made years ago. Uh, and other films like that, The Artist from 2011, but I'm talking about classic cinema. These are like very, very good movies. These are movies that you need to watch, and they're in black and white. For some people, it's a little hard to adjust to, and I get it. I used to be in that camp for a little bit. But here are five films I really do think you will enjoy that are in black and white, and I challenge you to explore more films uh, pre-1970 that usually were in black and white. So starting off the list... I sound like your average high school film appreciation class, but for my top five, I'm going to go ahead and start with 12 Angry Men by Henry Fonda, or starring Henry Fonda, directed by Sidney Lumet. Sidney Lumet is a great director, also did Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino, John Cazell. Uh, but 12 Angry Men, based on a play, uh, this is the Criterion release, but you can get this in a 4K through Kino Lorber, basically taking over uh, you know, Criterion at this point. Um, 12 Angry Men uh, is about a jury group of 12 men who decide the fate of, uh, of, a, of a boy who's, uh, who attempted murder, presumably, and they have to vote to see if they're going to you know, prosecute him as guilty or not. Henry Fonda leads this great cast in deciding what's right and what's wrong um, and the bias that we do have on a hot summer day. Uh, this is a great black and white film. It feels obviously like a play at times, but there's so many great moments and great performances in this movie. It's such an easy watch. You're going to be so enthralled with the acting on screen um, that you're going to forget it's in black and white. So I highly recommend 12 Angry Men. I think a lot of people have seen this movie, but if you haven't, this is definitely one of those go-to just must-watches. And I think you'll get really into the black and white films as a whole. The next movie on the list uh, is, a, is a very, very old movie. Specifically, I have it here in a box set, the Universal Monsters box set. Now, Universal Monsters, Dracula, Invisible Man... Frankenstein and so on this uh the creature from the black lagoon but there's one in particular I think you should watch and I think you should watch all of them maybe except for Phantom of the Opera with Claude Rains because that one's in color but uh when it comes to the Universal Monsters the one I recommend the most is the Wolfman and I have here the NECA of Lon Chaney Jr.'s NECA uh Wolfman I know it's a little hard to see <laughs> but uh, I love this figure yeah I do have it colorized now uh, but I did have the black and white version. But when it comes to the Universal Monsters, I think The Wolfman is a very old film uh, from the 1940s. Uh, or is it the 1930s? I don't know my film history. I highly recommend The Wolfman. It's it's so fast. The movie starts and then it ends so quickly. You're like, wait, what the hell did, did I just watch? That was so quick. Uh, the movie is like just over 60 minutes or 70 minutes long. It's really short. The movie looks great in black and white. You get to see really good smoke. You see a lot of great practical effects. You get to see the shadows. There's so there's so much ambiance in the black and white of this film that I think if it was in color, it would totally kill it. Um, it's a it's a quick and easy watch, so you won't get bored. And then this because I know like with the MCU, you have to have like one of those he's right behind me, isn't he? Kind of jokes in your movies now, but 
The Wolfman, I think, moves really quick. It's going to keep you entertained. And then you're going to forget it's in black and white. So I highly recommend you check out The Wolfman. Next movie on the list, whodunits have been very popular thanks to our Lord and Savior, Ryan Johnson, of Last Jedi fame. Now yeah, I do love the, the Last Jedi, so yeah. When it comes to uh, whodunits, I like to think like Clue in a lot of earlier films. One that I love in particular is a private investigator um, with his wife. I'm talking about William Powell and um, Myron Loy in The Thin Man. This is a Warner Archive release of The Thin Man from 1934. They spawned a whole bunch of sequels. They basically have a cinematic universe. So you might get interested in this uh, for some of the bozos watching, but um, Nick and Nora Charles are a couple who get thrown into investigating this murder. Uh, William Powell is just terrific as like this kind of jokey, taking half serious, but also really great at his job role uh, in trying to figure out this murder. It's pretty quick as well. I mean, it's at 91 minutes, but in black and white, you know, I think it's a great look into what um, entertaining mystery films are. You're going to be constantly wondering who done it. <laughs> and, and I think The Thin Man will push you to want to check out the sequels that are just as good as well. So I really recommend The Thin Man. You can get it at Warner Archives collection. Uh, the only problem with that is it's all on Amazon now. So you're gonna, I, I would recommend splurging on this one just a little bit. The next movie on the list, we're going to go into some horror films because I know there's a lot of horror knots that follow me. And this is one that I, I actually didn't like when I first watched. I didn't really get the hype on it. But now I, I'm totally in love with this franchise. I am excited for the Arrow release of this um, and upgrading this Bummy Blue. But that is Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960. Uh, what hasn't been said about Psycho? This is... Uh, the mommy Sigma boys dreams right here. Uh, but basically if you haven't seen this movie, I'll try not to spoil too much. Anthony Perkins plays Norman Bates and runs the Bates motel and gets thrown into this mystery and murder. Uh, it's in 1960 black and white. This movie has so much aura and so much chaotic energy. It, it, it's very suspenseful. I think it works well because the black and white, um, usage in this movie um, you think about the famous shower scene that looks amazing you talk about just Norman Bates Anthony Perkins portrayal is just great yet chilling at the same time the last frame of the movie is it's totally creepy as well uh, when you think about like classic horror um, that's not from like the universal monsters and just like kind of like pre-slasher Psycho is definitely that movie to watch. And if you haven't seen Psycho, you're going to be seeing one of the best movie uh, horror movies in the genre uh, with this. And it's in black and white. So go ahead and check this movie out. And my final movie. This one is a little bit, if you've watched these and you, you know, I'm, I'm sold on the black and white movies now. This is the movie you need to watch. This is one of the best movies ever made. This is The Night of the Hunter by Charles Lawton. You can get this on the Criterion or you can get it on Kino Lorber um, with the 4K. Should I? Upgrade my criterions to 4K. What are your thoughts on that? Drop a comment down below if I should. But Night of the Hunter uh, stars Robert Mitchum, who plays, and I think this one's going to play really well for a lot of people. He plays this sort of preacher, but he's not actually a preacher. He's an escaped convict who preys on this little town, trying to kidnap these children. As I open this up, you can see how terrifying um, the portrayal of Robert Mitchum is. Uh, there's some great, great set pieces in here. There's some chilling scenes as well. The dialogue will get your blood boiling. When we talk about, you know, religion, also about how it convinces people to believe things and, you know, and look past, you know, really gross behavior. The Night of the Hunter is one of those great movies and it's in black and white. And I think if it was in color, it wouldn't be as scary as it really is. This movie is haunting. This movie is chilling. This movie is disturbing for its time. 1955. Uh, check this movie out. If you're a big horror movie fan, you need to watch this movie. Though it isn't like a slasher like the, the 1980s films, it's a more subtle horror. It's definitely like pre-824, I would say, if you like those kind of... Makes you think a little, but it's pretty straightforward at the same time. I'm really just trying to entice you to watch Night of the Hunter, really. Uh, but this is a great movie in black and white. I think the, the black pops. Um, I think it's a beautiful looking movie. Honestly, I think black and white movies look really good especially on like blu-ray they, they they just really looks great and on 4k as well so this is one movie i highly recommend you check out but other than that what are some movies in black and white that i didn't mention that you recommend is for people for people to watch that aren't really accustomed to black and white movies now this is i'm not saying like you have to watch them but 
you probably should give a lot of the black and white movies a chance because there's some of the best movies ever made in black and white too. If you've seen some black and white movies, let me know down below some of your favorites as well. I uh, really like to hear um, some, see some conversations down below. Thank you again for the support as well. Don't forget to sh like and share this um, with your friends and on social media. Uh, it really would help me out. But other than that, my name is Chris here at Hurtastic Reviews. And remember, if you aren't discovering new black and white films to watch, do you really care about cinema? Other than that, I'll see you next time.